The weird thing here is that the method that is available in the free version is actually better than the method that is available in the paid version of Resolve, uh, in certain ways at least. Hi, I'm Alex Jordan from Learn Color Grading and FilmSimplified.com, and last week I released a video where we discussed the scene cut detection feature in, in uh, Resolve, and uh, that method that we discussed uh, was basically specific to the paid version of Resolve. It's a much easier workflow, but it's only available in the paid version of Resolve. So let's take a look today at achieving the same exact thing, actually slightly better, in a, in a slightly better way, using the free version of Resolve. Let's start. Before we start, we're currently running uh, our holiday deal where you can have access to all of the Film Simplified courses, uh, the full Vivid Pro LUT pack, uh, the full title pack, the full practice footage library. It comes with lifetime access to all the courses and includes all the updates for $97. Um, you can check it, the link is in the description. If you did not watch the first video, it's simply uh, a method that allows Resolve to detect the cuts in, in a particular file. So if you, if you have one video file and you need to work on different clips in the file, uh, instead of you going and finding the exact cut points and you know making the cuts manually, which might take forever, uh, Resolve has a way to automate this process. So let's take a look at achieving the same thing in the free version of Resolve. The weird thing here is that the method that is available in the free version is actually better than the method that is available in the paid version of Resolve, uh, in certain ways at least. The main difference here is that the method available in the free version requires you to do this before you import the file. So in the paid version of Resolve, you import the file, then you work on it. It still comes with its own set of problems because uh, it doesn't allow you, uh, it, it allows you, but I mean, it requires extra work to uh, add the cut files into the uh, media pool. So notice that I don't not have the file here in the media pool yet so this method requires you to do this before you import the file so I'll start by navigating to the media tab by clicking here and this is the media tab the section to the top left here is the media storage section it's simply a file navigator it allows you to navigate to different files on your system so I navigated to this file this is the file that I want to import I'll double click on the file and notice that the file is uh, comprised of multiple clips that we need to cut so all of these clips are basically combined into one simple video file. Achieving this is pretty simple. I'll right click on this file and here I have an option for scene cut detection. I'll click it and Resolve opened this window. This is the scene detect window. Even though this window looks a bit complex, it's actually pretty simple. You need to click one button and adjust one parameter. That's it. So in order to tell Resolve to detect the scene cuts in this file, all I need to do is to click this button auto scene detect. And Resolve is doing its thing going through the file and trying to locate the different scene cuts. And this is the result of the work that Resolve done. Now, how does the system work? First, notice this horizontal line here. This is not simply a line, this is a controller. So I can click it and drag it up or down. Next, we have these vertical lines. So notice that this is a vertical line and this is another vertical line. This one is much shorter than the first one. What's the difference? Each one of these lines represents a cut or at least Resolve believes that there should be a cut here. So whenever there's a line, Resolve tells you, maybe there's a cut at this point, I'm not sure. And the height of each one of these lines basically represents how confident Resolve is that there is a cut at this point. So for example, this line is longer than this line. So what's happening here is that Resolve is telling you I'm way more confident about the existence of a cut at this line here than at this line. And remember, this is simply a timeline. You have a playhead here that you can move around in order to check the cuts. Next, keep an eye on this line. Notice how its color will change once I bring the horizontal controller down. Notice that once it crosses the line, this line just became green. So if the threshold line is above it so they're not touching the vertical line here is gray and once I drag the threshold line below 
the top of this line, now it becomes green. So for example, if I bring the threshold all the way down, now all the lines are green. If a line is green, you simply tell Resolve, yes, please create a cut at this point. So by dragging the threshold line up or down, you simply tell Resolve which cuts to ignore and which cuts to keep, or in other words, which cuts are correct. Yes, there is actually a cut here or which cuts to ignore. And you can check the cuts by simply using the uh, playhead. So by keeping an eye on the monitor, here while we move the playhead around this cut you can see that there is actually a cut here and that the file moved from one clip to the next which means that all these cuts are correct and I just dragged the threshold line down in order to make sure that all these lines are actually green and now that we checked all the cuts the next thing is to simply click on add cuts to media pool here. I'll click it. Resolve is asking me if I want to change the project's frame rate. I'll change it. And it seems that nothing happened. However, I'll click here in order to close this window and notice what we have here in the media pool. Each one of the cuts was imported as a separate file. So notice something very important here. The original file is not imported. You cannot find this file here in the media pool. Instead, each one of the many cuts or the small clips within the file file was imported basically as a separate clip that looks like a standalone clip. So if I switch now to the edit page and go to the media pool, let's close the effects window, zoom in a bit and notice that each one of these clips represents one cut. And this is a huge advantage. This is one of the main differences between the two methods. So the method that is available in the paid version and the free version. Of course, the paid version of Resolve has both methods. It's not like you have to choose. But I mean, when it comes to the uh, free version of Resolve, this is a much better workflow because now you have the files here in the media pool and you can import them into multiple timelines. And I can basically drag any of the files here and work on it as if it's a simple clip. However, notice that this file is not simply linked to a simple clip on the hard, on the, on the hard drive. Basically, all of these uh, files are coming from one video file on the hard disk and these are just represented here as if they're different clips. And this is basically how you achieve the same effect. So the scene cut detect in uh, the uh, free version of Resolve. There is one more trick that we need to discuss here. Notice that you have multiple clips. What if you wanted to import the clips into the timeline and you want to recreate the original edit? So um, you want basically the same sequence and you don't want to move things around by mistake. You want to make sure that you actually recreate the original clip well, that's pretty simple. Let's expand the media pool a bit. And here we have this button that allows us to view the clips as a list. I'll click it. And here notice that we have a column for start time code. So even if, for example, you change the clips uh, at one point or you move them to a different folder, you can simply come here to the start time code, click it and make sure that the clips are basically arranged based on time code. Of course, note this is not a clip. This is the timeline. However, for the rest of the clips, they're all sorted based on time code. And and the next thing you can do is to simply, let's delete this file, select the first file, select the last file, then I'll hit command and click on the timeline to deselect it. And now if we drag the clips to the timeline, they will be sorted the same way they were sorted in the original file, which will allow you to recreate the original file the way it is, or the way it was, I'm not sure. So this is how you achieve the same effect in the uh, free version of Resolve. Um, I hope this was helpful. If it was helpful, uh, check our uh, current holiday sale. Um, the link is in the description. Thank you. Filmsimplified.com